Hello guys, this is Chetan Mehta from Skillcubator. I welcome you all. So let's take a look at what exactly is a scope and what's the difference between a product and a project scope. Now the term scope is very important and especially when you're working in a projectized environment. So first we'll understand the term scope and then we'll see what is a product and the project scope. So simply said, the scope refers to the amount of work that needs to be done, that needs to be completed in order to meet your stakeholders expectations. Now what does it mean? For example, you are building a new system. Now all the work which you need to do in order to complete the system so that your customer is satisfied is part of the scope. That's a scope. But then the scope can be further classified into two different categories. One is the product scope and the second one is the project scope. Now the product scope mainly refers to the features or the attributes the product will be supporting when you hand it over to your client. For example, you're building an online banking application and your banking application needs to support a payment transfer feature. And that feature will be supported by your system. So that's your product scope. Whereas the project scope refers to the list of activities or the tasks which you need to complete in order to successfully deliver the product or the system in this case. For example, as part of the project, you need to conduct a user acceptance testing. That activity must be completed in order to complete the project. So that's your project scope. Now, even though both are equally important, the product and project scope, your product scope will be very important, especially from the requirements perspective, because the product scope equates to all the system features and the functionalities it must support. Now, second point is your product scope and your project scope both will be taken into consideration when the project manager will be coming up with the cost estimates and the schedule, that is how long the project will take to complete. Now, product can be a tangible or it can also be an intangible entity. Now, let's go over some examples of a product. For example, a product can be an online banking application, a web-based application. It can be a bridge, it can be a building, it can be a smartphone, it can be a car or a service you're building for a client, or it can be as simple as you're creating some sort of food. All of these are examples of a product. Now, as I said, the product and the project scope, they both are different, but they are very important for everyone on the team to understand. Because if any of these are not met, the project will not be considered to be a success and it's not going to be well accepted by your client. So as I said, the product scope mainly refers to any of the features or the capabilities the system or the product you are building must support. For example, 
If you are building an online banking application, your product support can be an online fund transfer or creating some reports, statements, which the user can use the system to do any of these functions or actions. Whereas a project scope will be any of the tasks or activities or it can also be some sort of documents or deliverables that must be created and successfully completed in order to build that product. Now here we have taken an example of an online banking application. So on the left side we have the product scope and on the right side we have the project scope. So your product scope, as I said, means all the features and the functionalities this online banking application must support, which can be used by your user. For example, account registration, user management, make the payments, view your balance, download monthly statements, manage your 401k account. All these features will be supported by your system and that's part of the product scope. On the other side, we have the project scope, which means all the activities and tasks we need to complete in order to successfully deliver the project. For example, all the project planning, all the recruitment, that means you need to hire the team, your requirements, your system architecture design, your development, your testing, your user acceptance testing, everything is part of the project scope. That means all these activities must be completed in order to successfully complete the project. In addition to that, there might be some documents or some deliverables you need to create and deliver to your client as part of your contractual obligations. It can be a PMP, it can be project charter, use case documents, test cases, test plan, n number of documents can be part of this list. Now we know what exactly a scope is a scope, what is a product scope and what is a project scope. Now we should also know what do we mean by what is in scope and what is out of scope. So when we talk about the product scope we need to further see what is in scope items and what is out of scope items. So for example, on the slide, we have all the items on the left, which is part of your in scope. That means your account registration, your user management, make payments, view balance, monthly statements, and 401k account. All these features or the capabilities will be part of the scope. That means when we deliver the system to the end user, the system will support all of these features. And on the, on the right side, we have the out of scope items, which means that none of these features will be available to the end user, maybe in that release or that particular project. For example, your international transfers, your electronic bill presentment and payment, mortgage payments, your tax reporting, all of these features will not be supported by the system and the user cannot use the system to do any of these features or the functions. That's in scope and out of scope thing. The same concept is applicable when we talk about the project scope. So on the left side, we have all the items, that means all the tasks and all the activities and all the deliverables which must be completed in order to successfully complete the project. For example, your project planning, your recruitment, requirements, system architecture, development, testing, UAD, all these activities are part of the scope. 
Your deliverables such as project scope statement and PMP is also part of the project scope. And on the right side, we have all the out of scope items. That means all the tasks and all the deliverables which will not be completed or which will not be part of the whole project. So if you take a look at all the activities and tasks which are not in scope refers to your user interface design, the deployment process, your service configuration, your database upgrade, all these activities will not be done by the team. Also all the deliverables like wireframes, HTML prototypes, your RMP requirements management plan, your interface control document, all of these will not be created by the team. So you need to be very specific what will be in scope and what will not be in scope so that you can set the expectations with your customer and they don't get any surprise at the end of the project that they didn't know before. So it's very important in the beginning of the project, you as a PM or a BA come up with what is in scope item and what is not in scope. So that way we all can be on the same page and we can complete the projects in a very successful way. So that's all for now and thank you for watching this video and for all your training needs please do contact us. Our contact number is 703-200-9921. Email id is info at skillcubator.com and website is www.skillcubator.com. Thank you and bye.